Hi everybody, my name is Andrew with Laser Eyes, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the Sparrow Bitcoin Wallet for beginners. So by the end of this guide, you will learn just the absolute basics of what you need to know to use Bitcoin. And um, so what that means is you'll learn how to send, receive, uh, you'll learn the basics of how transactions and UTXOs work. Um, and uh, let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is we need to connect to a Bitcoin network. So first, let's open up the Sparrow wallet and you'll end up at an intro screen like this here because this is my first time opening it. Um, I am just going to spam the next button a few times, but all these screens are talking about is this yellow switch here. They're just telling you what the different colors of the switch mean. So I'm going to spam next and uh, you could click configure now, this blue button, or you can click the configure later button here on the right. I'm going to click configure later just to make a point. So if you were to open up Sparrow before, you would open Sparrow now to a screen like this. So to arrive at the preferences or the server uh, preferences screen, you're going to click file here, preferences, and then the server button. So here you'll see the same familiar colors on the top. So what they depict here is yellow means you're connecting to a public Bitcoin node. And the other two colors mean you're connecting to a, you know, your own node of some kind. Blue would be a private Electrum and green would be private Bitcoin core. So I'm going to keep the public node selected, select the drop down here and test the connection. So uh, in Bitcoin, you must be connected to a node to uh, do anything with the network. So you need to connect to a node to read about the network and you need to connect to a node to broadcast transactions to a network. So um, if you're not using your own node, you're using somebody else's and that's what this uh, server setup here is. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click the close button and we'll move on. So now you'll see on the bottom right here, this switch is toggled and it's yellow. And that's because we are connected to a public node. So that handles the first, uh, the first checkpoint in our agenda. Next, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create our first Bitcoin wallet for free. So we're gonna go ahead, click file, click new wallet, and let's go ahead and give this wallet a name. From here, you can go ahead and just leave the defaults. This is a little advanced. You don't really need to worry about this too much. Let's go ahead and let's click new or imported software wallet because we do want a free software wallet that Sparrow generates for us. So here we have different options on how we want to import this wallet or generate the wallet. Uh, the the mnemonic, mnemonic <laughs> uh, words, that's the most popular. Uh, there are other options, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the mnemonic words. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna use the um, the drop down menu here and select uh, 12 words. You can you can select anywhere between 12 to 24 words, but uh, 12 words is plenty secure. These 12 words are your Bitcoin wallet. So I'm gonna go ahead and click generate new because I want a new wallet, and I'm gonna keep these words private. So I'm gonna go write these down on a piece of paper. What I am doing here by showing them to you is very, very bad. You do not want anybody to know of these words because whoever knows these words uh, controls all the money in this wallet. So I'm gonna go ahead and write down these words. Um, here's a use passphrase checkbox. I'm gonna leave this unchecked. What this is, is it's basically like an added word on top of your 12 words that you already selected. So if you know your 12 words and you don't know your passphrase, you cannot recover your wallet. So for, um, so for ease of use, I'm gonna leave this unchecked or blank uh, while I go ahead and uh, create my uh, create my wallet here. So I'm going to go ahead and press this button here. It's going to ask me if I wrote everything down. I'm going to say yes, I wrote it all down. Let's, let's do the little test. And now it's going to ask me to write all these 12 words back in to make sure I wrote them down correctly. Uh, a quick note about these BIP39 words. So uh, these words are from a pre-selected word list. Um, so they're not totally random, but something important to know about these words is that the first four letters or the first four characters of each word is unique. So you'll notice like some uh, backup uh, or some seed backup papers or some seed backup steel plates, they'll only have room for four characters. And that's because the first four characters of the BIP39 words here are all unique. So BIP39 is just basically, um, it's just uh, the, the, the Bitcoin change that added uh, th this word list. So when people say BIP39, they're talking about this word list pretty much. So let's go ahead and we'll leave the derivation path as it is. That's what this uh, string is here. And I'm going to click import key store with the defaults. And this is just the, uh, the final check screen. Let's go ahead and click apply to create the wallet. 
and this is an optional passphrase or a passcode that we can put um, to lock Sparrow. So whoever has this passcode can unlock your wallet here, um, but you do not need this passcode to recover your wallet. You just need those 12 words you wrote down earlier uh, to recover your wallet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, put some put some passphrase here just for a demo, and I'm gonna set this password. And just like that, our Bitcoin wallet has been set up. We now have our first Sparrow Bitcoin wallet uh, for free. So uh, it's awesome. So this is the transactions tab. Here's the send tab, receive tab, addresses tab, UTXOs, etc. So let's go. Let's go ahead and talk about receiving. Receiving is very simple. We are just going to go here over to the left side and click the receive tab. And here at the very top, you'll see an address. So this is what you would send to people when they ask you for a Bitcoin address. So let's say your friend wants to give you 20 bucks. They say, give me an address. You click receive here on the left. You copy this address here at the top and you send that to your friend. Something to note about addresses in Bitcoin is you have an unlimited of receive addresses. So if I click this addresses tab here, you'll see that first address here at the very top that we saw in the receive tab. Your receive tab will automatically grab the next address here in this list once the top you know once the previous address has been used so sparrow will do its best to make sure that each wallet is only used one time and this is by design for security purposes so don't be alarmed when you see a new address every single time they're all going to the same wallet and so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to copy this um address or i could scan the qr code i'm actually going to scan the qr code with my um with another wallet i have on my phone and i'm going to go ahead and send it some bitcoin so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So my Bitcoin has been sent and now I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for my transaction to come through. I'm going to go over here to the transactions tab to wait for it. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and press control and R or command R if you're on Mac to go ahead and get a refresh started. Sparrow is normally pretty good at refreshing, so you don't need to do this, but um, in this case, I just went ahead and, and did it. And, and here we can see our transaction here in the mempool. It is sitting unconfirmed right now. So now is the perfect time to talk about what a confirmation is. So a confirmation in Bitcoin is, it tells you how much blocks you are in. So in Bitcoin, you have new blocks uh, of transactions being added on top of each other. So right now we are in this green block right here on the left side, we are unconfirmed waiting to be added into a block. So if you're in one block, right? So if you made it into block uh, 862, 878, and you got mined already, you would have one confirmation because you are in one block. But let's say you were in block 862, 875, your transaction is in, is in that block somewhere. You got mined way back then. You have three blocks built on top of you you now have four confirmations. So you have the three blocks on top of you plus the one block you're in. So you have four confirmations. If you are if you have zero confirmations, that's also known as uh, unconfirmed or as being in the memory pool or mempool for short. This screenshot that I'm using here is from a website called mempool.space and we're gonna use them more uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the send step. The last thing to know about confirmations is in Bitcoin, six confirmations is the gold standard. So if you look up here at um, at our Sparrow wallet transactions, you'll see a little circle next to the value of our transaction here in, 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 the, in the first row. That circle will fill up when you hit six confirmations. So uh, six confirmations is the gold standard. So let's go ahead and let's uh, learn about sending Bitcoin. So sending Bitcoin is really easy. Um, I'm gonna show you uh, me sending Bitcoin back to my wallet of which I had received Bitcoin from earlier. So I have the address copied on my other screen. I'm going to copy that and paste that into here really quickly. Let's add a label so that um, I can label it in Sparrow and I know what this transaction is when I look back in the future. And I want to send all my Bitcoin here. So I'm going to click the max button. Now to determine the fee that we want to send with our Bitcoin, because we had to incentivize a miner to include our transaction into a block, Let's open up mempool.space here and you can see what the fee rates currently are. So here they are at three sats per VByte. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this into Sparrow Wallet. You know, you don't wanna overpay too much. 
but I'm going to overpay just a little bit just to incentivize a miner to uh, pick up my transaction and add it into a block. Here you can check out the, um, the flow of the transaction. So we have one input. So I only have one uh, UTXO here. So UTXO is kind of like a dollar bill. So I only got paid once. So I have one UTXO and I'm sending that into the transaction and the transaction is generating two UTXOs or two more dollar bills, uh, one to my destination and a smaller, a smaller cut to the miner. Cause like I said, you got, you got to pay the miner for every transaction. So if everything looks good, let's go ahead and let's click uh, create transaction here. Everything still looks good. Let's finalize it for signing. Uh, let's sign the transaction by entering our wallet password that we had set. And let's go ahead and let's broadcast this transaction here. So we're basically going back through our Bitcoin node and saying, hey, I have this transaction. It's signed. Uh, send it out into the world. I'm, I want this to go through. So it has been sent. We can go back to the transactions tab here and we can see our new trans our, our, um, our new transaction taking place. So that's how you send a Bitcoin transaction. It's, uh, it's super easy. So let's end this by briefly talking about uh, how transactions work and uh, what a UTXO is. So um, at a very high level, a UTXO is basically like a dollar bill. So when you're trading Bitcoin, you're not like sending Bitcoins. You're basically sending Bitcoins through UTXOs. So, um, and, you know, just like dollar bills, when you pay somebody, let's say you pay somebody $10 with a $20 bill, you should expect to get changed back. So that's exactly how the UTXO model works with, you know, with Bitcoin transactions. Um, the only other caveat is there's always a middleman or uh, not really a middleman, but he could, he could be thought of as like a middleman because he's collecting a fee, but it's the miner, right? So to include your transaction into a block, you have to, you have to pay the miner. You have to incentivize him to pick up your transaction. So um, that's how, um, that's how Bitcoin transactions work. And uh, you can see that in, um, you know, you can see that here if you analyze these other transactions uh, in Sparrow. But uh, that's all I got. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you got value out of this video. If you did, please leave a like, uh, maybe a comment and share with some of your friends. Um, yep. See ya.